This is the first part of my talk about how to process Arenagram. The aim of this talk is to explain how to process a gamma camera Arenagram in order to determine three things. First of all, the relative kidney function of left kidney compared with the right kidney. Secondly, absolute kidney uptake, which determines whether the kidneys are normal or poorly functioning. And thirdly, elimination of urine from each kidney into the bladder. During the talk, I shall pay particular attention to talking about the best way to subtract background activity, which is a very important part of arenogram processing. So the talk is divided into six parts. In the first part, I'll give an introduction which explains what arenogram is. I'll talk about the basic steps involved in processing arenogram and explain a bit of relevant arenography history. In part two, I shall talk about background subtraction and describe a model of the renogram which can be used to help us to recognize when we have obtained correct amount of background subtraction. In part three, I'll show some examples of renograms which have had background subtraction applied using different methods. And in part four, I'll explain how to draw the necessary regions of interest. In part five, I'll describe the recommended background subtraction methods and in part 6 I'll talk about quantification, how we calculate the relative function and the output efficiency. I will cover the subject of calculating absolute uptake and allowing for kidney depth in a separate talk on how to display the renogram. So first of all let's explain what a renogram is. Well, the renogram is just a diagnostic nuclear medicine procedure to investigate kidney function. Uh, it's performed by positioning the patient in front of a gamma camera. They may be seated or lying down, but in either case you get a posterior view of the kidneys. Then we inject a suitable radiopharmaceutical, which is a radioactive tracer that's excreted through the kidneys and into the urine. And we acquire a dynamic study with the gamma camera typically one image for every 20 seconds or so for about 30 minutes. And then we analyze these images using a computer to produce curves of activity uh, against time. And the renogram curve that we produce demonstrate kidney function. They show the uptake by the kidneys and elimination into the bladder. So the result that we ob obtain uh, looks something like this. This is an example of a normal Renogram. At the top we've got some examples of some images. In this case these are uh, images every five minutes and we can see that the gamma camera sees activity starting off in the kidneys and then later on draining from the kidneys into the bladder. And we can use these images to draw regions of interest here in blue around the left kidney, red around the right kidney, green around the bladder and we can produce from that some curves showing how the activity changes with time. Here the blue curve is the curve for the left kidney, the red for the right kidney and the green the bladder and we can see that the left kidney and the right kidney in the first few minutes rise at the same rate showing that the uptake, the function in both kidneys is about the same. Uh, the computer in fact calculates the rate of function of the left kidney to be 52% of the patient's total renal function and the right kidney 48% of the total. In this case we can see that both kidneys reach a peak at about four minutes and thereafter begin to empty. So we can see that both kidneys empty normally in this particular case. So that is the sort of result that we're aiming to produce by our renogram analysis. So the steps in renogram processing will depend very much on the nuclear medicine system that you're using. Um, so the steps that I'm going to describe here are the basic steps as described in the guideline from the British Nuclear Medicine Society. The procedures in individual computers may be slightly different to this. But we start by checking the dynamic images. Here we see the images acquired by the gamma camera. It was actually one image every 20 seconds, but here it's very much speeded up. And we can see the activity starting off in the kidneys, draining down the ureters, and then appearing in the bladder. As well as looking to see what uh, anatomy we're viewing here, um, we need to check that the patient didn't move, that they kept still enough 
uh, for us to analyze during the study. Then we create a summed image of all of that dynamic study, which shows both kidneys and bladder and makes it easier to draw some regions of interest. We can then draw a region of interest around the left kidney here in blue, around the right kidney in red, uh, some background region in a suitable place and in, later in this talk I will spend some time explaining the different choices of background regions uh, and also around a bladder. And then we check these regions on a dynamic display to make sure that the regions encompass uh, the right areas for the kidney, that the uh, kidneys stay within the kidney regions, the patient doesn't move and the bladder stays within the, the bladder region. Once we've done that, we can use those regions to generate activity time curves, showing how the activity in each region of interest changes with time during the, the study. Then we perform background subtraction to subtract the background from the kidney and bladder curves, uh, and I will discuss the details of that during this talk. Then we calculate the relative function and something called the output efficiency, showing how well the kidneys are emptying. Uh, then we analyze any late images that have been acquired after the end of the renogram and display all this appropriately. Um, I have a separate talk on how to display the renogram, which will include analysis of the late images and appropriate display. So I mentioned that we use um, a suitable radio pharmaceutical. There are three that I should mention. Technetium 99M labeled DTPA is a radio pharmaceutical that is extracted by filtration only in the kidney. That means that it's got a relatively low kidney uptake and so there is a poor kidney to background ratio because there's not much in the kidney and quite a lot left in the blood which means we've got a large background in the renogram curves which makes subtraction difficult. Technetium 99M labelled MAG3 on the other hand has got some tubular secretion as well as filtration. That means we have better kidney uptake so we have more in the kidney, less in the blood and we get a better kidney to background ratio. That means there's less background in the renogram curves and that makes background subtraction uh, not too difficult as long as we have good function. Actually, iodine-123 labelled hippuran is much better because it's got very good tubular secretion which gives a high kidney uptake so there's plenty in the kidney, not much in the blood and we have an excellent kidney to background ratio. That means that the background in the curves is very low which makes background subtraction very easy. Unfortunately, I-123 labelled hippuran is too expensive for routine use, so for normal rhinography we have to make a choice between technetium 99M DTPA and technetium 99M MAG3. But just to tell you a little bit about relevant rhinography history, back in the 1960s when rhinography started, people used these probe systems here where the patient sat in this chair with two, uh, two probes behind their back, one uh, over the left kidney, one over the right kidney, and in this case two additional ones, one over the chest and one over the bladder, and they were injected with iodine-131 labelled hippuran. And the electronics here recorded the count rate in the four detectors and plotted the count rate as a function of time out onto a chart recorder like this. So there was no need for computer processing. It was all a re real-time result. The curves were produced directly from the four detectors. Hippuran has a very good excretion, so it produced um, plenty of good uptake with very little background. Uh, iodine 131 it has a long half-life and also gives some beta emissions. So it gives a high radiation dose if you give a lot of it, but because the probes were so sensitive, we were able to give very small quantities of iodine 131 with a consequently very low radiation dose and to very easily get these studies uh, with these probes. In the 1970s, um, when technetium 99 DTPA became available and the gamma camera became um, uh, readily available too, the combination of technetium DTPA and the gamma camera led a lot of people to uh, acquire their renograms with gamma cameras in the 1970s.
but in Manchester we continued using iodine 131 ipuran with our probe system until in 1977 we had the luxury of being able to use iodine 123 hippuran which became available locally and that was well suited to the gamma camera so in the 1970s most people were using gamma camera with DTPA in Manchester we were using gamma cameras with iodine 123 hippuran but when mag3 came along in the 1990s um, it became clear that everyone would uh, change to that. Those who were using DTPA changed to it because the uptake was so much better than DTPA, although it was more expensive. In Manchester, we changed to Mag3 because it was cheaper than Hippuran, although its uptake was not as good. So the way you look upon Mag3 depends where you came from. In Manchester we looked upon it as not quite as good as Hippuran, but it, other people would look upon it as much better than DTPA. And I guess nowadays um, almost everyone is using MAG3, although there are still some places uh, who will use DTPA, which is uh, relatively cheaper. So that history will become relevant a little later on when we look at the different background techniques. So rhinography basically is a dynamic study, so things change with time. Time is the important thing in rhinography. And it's the curves that show how the tracer moves through the kidneys. So the curves are what shows how things change with time. The curves are more important than the images. With our probes, we only got the curves. We didn't have any images. If you use a gamma camera to acquire your renograms nowadays, then you will have images from which you can draw regions to generate curves. But it's the curves that are the renogram, not the images. The upslope of the curves demonstrate kidney uptake. They will show the relative function of one kidney compared with another, but also the absolute function of each kidney compared with normal. But also the downslope of the curves demonstrate elimination. So it's the curves that matter and it's obviously important to produce the correct curves. If we don't produce the correct curves, the uh, result of the renogram will be misinterpreted. The curves are everything in rhinography. So that's the end of the first part of this talk. Uh, in part two, I'll discuss the importance of background subtraction of the renogram.